for the peace and quiet, please? Can everybody hear me? No. Because if you can't, it's going to take a lot longer. Right. First of all, I'd like to say welcome to everybody here tonight, and I must say it's a wonderful turn, eh? Um, especially on our 135th presentation night of Wimborne Town Football Club. So, as I say, it's, uh, it's a presentation evening. It's when we thank everybody, uh, you know, involved with the club for their time and effort and their continuity they give to make Wimborne Town run efficiently and make it a far more friendlier professional club. This year, on the playing side, we have done much better. Steve, Paul, Andrew and Clive have worked very hard to see us at the end of the season just above halfway in the league table. Unless, and let's not forget about the rest of Wimborne Town. It's not all about the first team. The reserves tomorrow are in a cup final. And New Milton, Fawcett's Field, I'll be there. So let's, uh, let's see how many others are there to cheer the lads on. And here they are, all around here. Well done. Uh, the, players have a, uh, the players have a great atmosphere in the dressing room. And I thank the players for their loyalty and dedication. And wherever you have gone, you, are, you have acted professionally under the umbrella of Wimborne Town Football Club. I thank my fellow co-directors and officers for their hard work. It has become a much bigger club now, and that is down to us all pulling together. All that said, it takes a lot more money, and I would like to thank all our sponsors, because without you, large or small, it would be very difficult to achieve our aims. Of course, let's not forget our supporters. They are the best. They come out through thick and thin, through bad and good results, in your hundreds, so I thank you on behalf of all the directors for that. Before we move on to the presentations, I would ask Steve Cuss to come forward and say a few words. Steve. Not very well liked. <laughs> I'm just uh, looking over my shoulder. He's not here, is he, Kevin Gill? So I feel quite safe at the moment. I keep thinking he's going to jump out me in a minute, but. Those who don't know Kevin Gill, he's uh, quite lively in the change room and uh, he's made it a bit more exciting, I would say, in, in that department uh, this season. So I'll keep looking over my shoulder, see if he jumps through the window or anything. Um, I'm never quite sure about what to, what to say when it comes to the end of the season presentation, whether people want to hear about a review of the season or whether they want to hear about what our plans are for next season. So I say to the board, what do you want me to do? And uh, they come back and said, We'll start with pre-season. As soon as they said pre-season, that was it. A shudder went down my back. <laughs> because uh, we decided in pre-season that we'd, uh, on the back of Tom Jeffs, who was coming here later, that would approach me about taking the squad away. So um, I, I contacted a few people from where I come from in Torquay, and we managed to arrange a game down there. And uh, we went down there, convinced a the guy that 25 of us could stay in his hotel. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure we'll be able to go back again next year, but <laughs> might, might have to go somewhere else. Probably what was going to happen for the weekend was probably set out when we arrived and uh, Roger and Brian, Brian O'Grounds, when Roger, our number one supporter, uh, decided to go down Decided to go down the night before and Brian was limping because uh, apparently they found the club in Torquay and he was practicing his pole dancing. So uh, I probably could have guessed what kind of... Uh, weekend it was but uh, in terms of in terms of our night out after the game we won 6-0 our night out not too much I can say with some certain people present but it involved having to leave the hotel quite early on the night out that was Kevin Gill as well um, finding a boat in the arbor and some of the players putting one particular player in there and pushing it out <laughs> And of course, and of course, uh, me having to stay behind on the Sunday morning and asking me mum and dad for a lift home because I had to wait for a player who was otherwise detained. So, uh, it was quite a weekend and set our, set our season off. In all honesty, the, 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 the overnight trip to Torquay set, set us apart from you know, what we were for the season. We've been a strong squad on and off the pitch. We've uh, sort of like stuck together through the good times and the bad times. And right throughout the season, 
you know, I think we've had some real highs, we've had some lows as well, but I think you can look at some of the cup competitions where we've, you know, we've knocked out Banbury, Weymouth, Dorchester, the good night here we had against them down the road where we knocked them out of the cup. Um, you know, those, those nights were good. You know, the performances in the league against Swindon home and away to, to take six points off a team that finished in third place. Yates at home when we won 5-1. You know, they're all good performances and they've been real highs for us. Of course, we made it through to the uh, Dorset Cup Final as well, uh, which second season running. Hopefully, third season running will actually win it. So we've got another runners up. And that's just where I'd just like to uh, pause just for a minute, because there was a couple of people that on the night didn't quite make the squad for various reasons. And uh, I've got the medals for them, because that's what I promised. Um, in his absence, Tom Jeffs got a job at Leighton Orient and couldn't make the cup final, so I know he's coming later, so if we can give Tom a little round of applause in his absence and he'll collect his medal then. The other person, probably because I didn't pick him, that's what he's going to say, but on the night he wasn't in the squad, but he is a valuable member of my team, um, both on and off the pitch, and unfortunately he wasn't in the playing squad that night, but he's going to get his medal now, and I know he's always a bit shy, but a big round of applause for Paul Rust. <laughs> Very, very, very fortunate in the fact that I've got a great team behind me in terms of uh, staff that work with me. Um, I'll start with uh, Paul. Um, you know, he's the assistant manager. He often says to me, I'm not sure I'm contributing much, but he underestimates himself. For me, he's, he's, he's there. He's my shoulder that I go and uh, lie on sometimes and ask the questions. And he gives me the direct answers. And as an assistant, that's what you want. You know, you want someone who's not just going to say, yes, boss, no, boss, you know. You want someone who's going to say, I think it should be done this way, and give me the other thing. So he's going to play as well. He's still a player man uh, assistant manager, so uh, we'll just give him another round of applause to Paul Rust. <laughs> also as well, we've got the, uh, the quality of Andy, Andy Batterson, who um, takes a bit of stick off the boys when he's refereeing his games. Um, but actually, his, you know, his coaching sessions that he puts on for the lads uh, are much appreciated. And again, from my point of view, having that quality on the training field week in, week out, has been a, been a massive help. So thank you to Andy as well. Clive Saunders, who I don't think has made it tonight, unfortunately. Um, but again, Clive has uh, offered us great support in looking after Jason, uh, Dan, Roasty, Pete, okay, the goalkeepers. So in his absence, we'll, uh, we'll give Clive a big round of applause as well. It comes to uh, the medical side then. I think that, you know, one area that we were probably lacking in uh, in my first season was that professionalism in the, in the medical department, having the players receiving the right kind of physio and the treatment. And I wanted to, to bridge that gap. And uh, I went after John, and um, we got him across from Bashley. Um, and I know he's, uh, uh, he's, he's gone down really well with the players in terms of getting them back fit and uh, ready. Um, he's been through some difficult times this season, and we've, uh, we've shared those times with him. And he forms a very, very important part of our squad. So again, thank you to John. Yeah. Also part of the team is uh, Ed. Uh, probably got the worst job at any football club, reserve team manager. Uh, difficult job in the fact that he gets a manager at the first team level says, I want that player and you're having this player this week. But Ed's done that with uh, real style. He looks after the young players that we've got here tremendously well. And again, Ed forms part of my team. And to the boys tomorrow, I would like to give uh, you the best of luck tomorrow and hope that you can give us that little bit of silverware and bring that cup back to us tomorrow. So good luck tomorrow, guys. Last but not least part of my team is Jeff, and uh, Jeff's official title I think is kit man, but I don't think that quite sums up what Jeff does. I think I get to the games quite early myself, I'm, I don't like to be late, and uh, as a player know when I get a bit grumpy when they're late, but you know, Jeff often is here before me, uh, I manage to come up in the week when I'm looking after some of the youth sides, 
and often I see Jeff up here and uh, all what Jeff does is voluntary and um, I know the boys think a lot of him as well and uh, I'm on a personal level uh, really grateful to, to Jeff for all his hard work and I've just got a little something for Jeff if you'd like to come up. Too long now so uh, just very very quick I'm, I'm always conscious on these nights that I don't want to forget somebody and uh, you know the thank yous um, so just very quickly running through a few thank yous to Peter Barham the secretary um, bit of a quieter season between the two of us this year I've only I think I've only used uh, 20 players this year where it was 45 last year and constantly around his house signing players on so a little bit quieter times for Peter but thank you for your support again Peter so, Matt and the staff behind the bar because uh, it's not only what they do on the, on a match day but uh, I'm not sure that people wear but after training on a Thursday Matt always puts some food on for us and it's just another way of standing us out as a, as a little better club in the way we look after our players so thanks Matt for that one. I'm not sure I haven't seen it. Is Brian, Brian the groundsman here? Yeah, he is here. Yeah, Brian. He's not pulled out. No, no, it's okay. Right. Just a big thank you to Brian. Uh, the pitch this season has been, you know, very, very good. We've been absolutely delighted with it in what's been a terrible season weather-wise. Again, you know, when I'm up here during the week working with the, with the younger players, um, you often see Brian out there on his own putting the hours in. So, you know, that's that's rubbed off. We think we only had the one game called off. And uh, you look at some of the other clubs that had, you know, up to 10, 12 or Bridgewater 31 games called off. You know, Brian's, Brian's made sure that we've been able to play every week. Uh, and that's been a big bonus to us. So thanks very much, Brian. To, uh, to Richard on the PR side of it, one thing that uh, you know I was very keen to do along with the board of directors is, is to put ourselves in the profile a little bit more and Richard's support on the website and Twitter and Facebook and getting the stories out there has been valuable so thank you to Richard as well. Last few for me, I promise. To uh, the, the tea ladies, as always, we very much appreciate your smiling faces as we come off that pitch, win, lose or draw. I think you look after one or two a little bit too much, particularly George Webb, who gets his bread put to the side with no butter on it. But to the tea ladies, as we call them, thank you very much for all your efforts. Stewards on a match day, really appreciate it. I know again they're coming very early, get things ready, so thank you very much to stewards that uh, give up their time on a match day. And also to uh, Ken, our coach driver, our loyal coach driver who takes us away. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> it's great that we often often have to change the route to pick someone up, he's been fantastic. So again, a little round of applause for Ken. We're going to do some uh, awards after Ed said a few words, um, but just just to finish off with uh, three big thank yous for me. Uh, I always do these three sets of people because I think they're so important. It's one to you, the supporters that are here tonight. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I said this last year. I think I'm quite pleased that the dugouts are over that side because I don't hear any abuse. Whether there is any abuse or not, I don't hear it. So it's quite nice. Um, and I know the play players appreciate that when we make a little bit of a noise and the drum comes out behind the goal and it's, uh, people down the side. And I'll always remember that that, that chant. I think just after uh, Nathan's. Uh, pinged one in against Yate in the top corner and they're crying for him to shoot again every time he gets it <laughs> and we scored the fifth goal and, and the crowd is singing we want six we want six you know those those kind of memories are, 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 are fantastic so thank you to all the supporters thank you always got to look after the people that employ you so the board uh, thank you very much for your tremendous support in chairman in Ken Stewart, I've got a great chairman who backs everything that we want to do. Ken Holloway, Tony Grant, but in particular, you know Ken Ken Fergus and Paul Miller. Um, I probably lean on them too a little bit during the week in terms of my ideas, my plans. I'm constantly on the phone saying, "Can we do this? Can we do that?" And most of the time, they back me, and uh, you know they understand what I'm trying to do here. So, a big thank you to the board, and in particular Ken and Paul. Thank you.
lastly, and it is lastly now, it's to the players. Uh, I've probably pushed you harder and harder this season in terms of trying to achieve our maximum that we can. We got ourselves, you know, this time last year when I stood here, we were flirting with relegation all season. You know, it was a very stressful season in terms of trying to pick up points and playing in pressure situation. For a different kind of reason, the players played under a, a pressure again this year, but that was because we had an expectation that we were going to win every game rather than just trying to hang on in some of the games that we did last year. And the players responded to that, and I thought with maybe a little bit of luck, we probably could have finished that touch a little higher. There was probably spells in the season where we were a little bit disappointed that we didn't pick up a few more points just to get us towards the playoffs. But, you know, that's down to the players. That's not down to anybody. I think, you know, a lot of people give credit to, to management and other people at times, but players play the game. Players play football, and uh, I've got a great bunch of players here. And hopefully that we can go on next year and push on again and maybe we can just touch those playoffs or even higher. So thank you very much to the players. Okay, and uh, we'll be back up in a minute to do some awards. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. I'll ask the reserve team manager, Ed Taylor, to come forward. He'll say a few words and then we will do the presentations to the reserve team. And I'll ask Ken Holloway to come up and present the awards. So over to Ed Taylor. Right, first of all, uh, I'd like to say one thing that's very important. Uh, last year, exactly this month, I sat there with uh, Cussie and we've made an open invitation to people that were interested from last year, reserves to come back. Uh, we sat there and we didn't get many tables together because it was Moggy and L's that turned up. Uh, the remit was quite a stern one from Steve. He said that uh, he wanted it played in a way where the year after we'd have more people coming to that meeting more people willing to be involved in the season after. And I wouldn't have come on board except for Steve and his intention with this club. And he's given lots of thanks tonight to everybody around. First of all, uh, I'd like us all to thank Steve for what he's brought to the club and the way he behaves. He's a man of dignity and he's a man that's got great enthusiasm for this club. Moving on to the situation with the boys, the remit was, as I said, to move forward and to uh, build uh, a team that increased the Wimborne football family. It's a young team, uh, both Steve and I agreed at the beginning that uh, we would capitalise on young talent and hope that that would continue throughout the club and be a resource for the first team in the future. Uh, my first port of call was to Els and Moggy, being the only attendees at that meeting. Uh, they seemed the best ones to start with. I then moved on thinking I need a good, strong keeper, uh, and that meant that it was a quick call uh, to Peter Singleton to see if he would be on board. You can see that this time last season, it was a question of piecing together the bits of the jigsaw. Uh, I'd worked with the under-18s youth team last year since November, and there were some outstanding players within that group and thankfully they were all keen to be involved. Uh, the first couple of team talks required a little bit of sensitivity to the fact that they were moving from youth football uh, into adult football and a few ground rules laid down that they were now their own men and that youth football was being left behind. Uh, they've adopted that, uh, they have matured quickly and I've got a great deal of pride in the fact of not only how they perform on the pitch, but in terms of attitude and enthusiasm, uh, I couldn't have a better group of lads. So if you'd like to give them a clap, that'd be brilliant. As far as the season goes, every manager uh, says it's about performance. Uh, and the reason I did that was because two things. It, it reduces your risk as a manager, 
all right, because you can always say, well, they're performing well. Uh, and secondly, it takes the pressure off the players. And as youngsters, uh, they didn't need the extra pressure of thinking that it was all about results. What they needed was to think that actually as long as they were developing quickly and enjoying what they were doing, that was enough for me. So, yes, uh, it gave me a little bit of a buffer zone in the sense that it took the pressure off me. But I think it has paid dividends with them to think that they can see themselves progressing and be part of a team that's developing through, uh, hopefully with an exit route through to Steve's first team. The situation, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is that obviously tomorrow is a totally different game. It's not about, uh, it's not about development tomorrow. It's about showing Sholing what we can do and showing Sholing how it should be done. Because we've had a, we've had a, we've had a situation with Sholing where uh, if you get their backs up, then anything can happen. And we're a team that like to get their backs up. We're also a team that tomorrow wants to go there and spoil their party. They've had one draw all season in the league, so they've only dropped two points. So tomorrow's going to be a bit of a surprise for them when we come out at them hard. Uh, and we come out with them at them in a, in a spirit that the boys have got and a determination that I want them to show. So it's, it's basically all bets off tomorrow. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a one-off situation where we aim to bring back the silverware and aim to uh, give these boys a big reward for the efforts that they put in. No pressure at all. Uh, it's a departure from taking the sting out of it. I'm afraid the pressure is on tomorrow, but they'll relish that. Uh, they're a team that's ready for the pressure. Uh, they've got a lot of character involved uh, in the team. And as far as I'm concerned, this year has been a success if I can get the majority of them signing on. Uh, I've got a couple of them going off to college in different localities who I wish well, and I hope it's just a temporary departure from the Wimborne group. Um, but at the same time, I think we've got a solid core and uh, we'll be moving forward again next year with it. Thanks very much. I'll ask Ken Holloway to come up and present the reserve team trophies. trophy to give out is uh, the golden boot uh, for top goal scorer. At present this young man stands as top goal scorer in the whole Wyvern League. Uh, 24, 24 goals out of 18 matches. Uh, he's a name for the future. He's one of the ones that's going off. Uh, I think he's probably going to choose Exeter University because I suggested oh. Cardiff. Uh, and he always goes with what, what you say. So uh, this is to Ben Mo. 24 goals out of 18 matches. All right, second, uh, second award is Players' Players' Trophy. Uh, I think this is a special award in the sense that it's your peers voting for you. Uh, they're seeing your characteristics throughout the season. They're weighing you up as a team player and somebody they can rely on. He's somebody that I feel has become a very mature footballer during this season. He always showed potential, but he's had the opportunity now which he's seized at different venues and at different standards to become a real force in defence. And it's Liam Donachie. said that there was a category for, uh, thankfully, for young players player, uh, which is, we both had a wry smile because uh, most of the team are under 19, 
Uh, so, in effect, it, it gave me another opportunity to perhaps give a manager's player to for a different criterion um, to to others. And in this, the criteria for this one really were was how has this person progressed? What sort of enthusiasm are they showing? Uh, in terms of raw talent, uh, I've decided to give it to Charlie Langston. And last, uh, but definitely not least, as he would say in the changing room, uh, the whole situation of putting together a young side requires that you've got to have a degree of maturity within it, a degree of footballing maturity within it. We had two lads, I call them lads, because even though they're more older than the, the bulk of the team, they're a lot younger than me. Uh, two lads that have actually provided a solid reference point for the boys during, during the season. One was the captain, Andy Phillips, who had a serious knee injury and an operation halfway through. Uh, and the other one is Steve Moore. Now Steve, to me, epitomizes what I needed, which was somebody that I could rely on and that the boys would see as a bit of a stepping stone from them to me, all right, in terms of age group and in terms of attitude and in terms of, perhaps even in terms of sense of humor. Um, and reckon, perhaps a little bit of recognition of the music they like as well. He was closer to that than I was. Uh, Steve Moore, manager's play. Thanks, Ken Holloway. Thank you. Thank you, Ed Taylor. Thanks very much indeed. And I think you lads have got the idea now what exactly you've got to do tomorrow. Okay? Well done. Right, right, we start off by saying thank you to everybody. Bar, uh, the bar manager, Matt Beanie, has already got his crate of wine, which I've given him. Charlie McCabe, I saw him here. The barbecue manager. Charlie, please, come forward. There's a bottle of champagne for you, Charlie. Yeah. Not for you, for the wife. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks very much. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. If I, can ask, if I can ask the stewards, Kevin Hart, Mike Randall, Peter Stroud, Adam Tubin, and Freddie Joyce to come forward, please. All the stewards do a great job. I'm sure there's some here. Only you, Mike. Kev as well, and the first aid right? Is that it, right? I would say you can take it on for him, but I know it wouldn't get there. Thanks very much indeed. One is for the club all round helper, Ross Grant. Thanks, Ross. And we got the next one is the, is the programme seller, Brian Brewer. Brian. Thank you, Brian. The 50-50 ticket seller, Brian McCann. Yeah. Oh, he looks very smart, doesn't he? Oh. It's Christmas, it's Christmas. <laughs> oh, I like someone who dresses up for the occasion. <laughs> Right then, can we next have the PA band, Barry Maxted, please? Thank you, Barry. Never short on a few words. So, thank you. Right, the next one is our groundsman, we are, uh, and we owe a lot of thanks for is Brian Sibley.
Thank you, Brian. And uh, the next in line is a turnstile operative, Simon Blank and Rudy Guga. Dedicated people, thank you so much. Next one is our press officer, you can't get him off the phone every Saturday night, it's Richard Button. Richard. I know he doesn't drink, but his wife does. <laughs> Well, the next one is our football club photographer, Simon Carton. <laughs> the next one is program editor and assistant, Ken Fergus and David Briggs, please. That's for Liz. <laughs> David, that's for you, man. <laughs> Thank you, David. Next one is our kit van, transport manager, and every other manager, Jeff Robbins. Well deserved. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Right, move on. Our liaison officer, Brian McIntyre, is he here? No, he's not. That's one bottle of champagne I can have. Our physio, yes he is. Oh, right. That's a shame. <laughs> so no one liaise with him. That means I can't have a thing. Brian McIntyre, please. Right. Our physio we move on to next, he's not the best looking but he's the actual brilliant man on the hands, it's John Edwards. I don't know, is, um, is our match day sponsor manageress Michelle Govia here? Is Michelle here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you would, lads. Yeah. We we'll move on then to our trusted treasurer, Jeff Baxter, please. And we move on next to my right hand man, our football secretary, Mr. Peter Barrow. Right, we move on now to the three most popular girls in the tea room Trish Robbins, Anne Barrow, and Elaine Plank. Please. Bloody hard work up here, I tell you. Right, 
Next one, and I know he's here. If we can have a bit of hush, it's only for another couple of minutes and then we can get it over with. The club shop manager, Gabriel Phelps. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks, Gabriel. He's going to have my job in a minute. We move on. We're very, uh, we're very honoured to have with us tonight our transport partner, Danbury Coaches. And uh, they're very, very good to us. If I could ask the manager, Helen House, to come forward, please, and have a bottle of champagne on us. You're very understanding and helpful. Thank you so much for all you do for us. needs a driver we got the best in the land he's just about taking us everywhere every mile up and down the country down the country all over the bloody place <laughs> Ken Brook please yeah. it's always nice to have a pleasant coach driver and someone who's got a smile on his face he's got a round with a nice behind him he really has and now we move on to the oldest supporter we've got Ryan, tonight. Ryan. It's Ken Holloway, and today it's his 66th wedding anniversary. Yay! 66 years, Harry. Twice the great train robbers only got 30. <laughs> Ken, I'll come over to you, Ken. <laughs> this is for Joan, Ken. 66 years. Looking to. Thanks, Ken, for you do. Our town crier's not here, so that is, is our town crier here, Mr. Brown? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, no. no, we would have heard him otherwise. Another bottle of champagne for me. And let's not forget, of course, our lovely manager's wife, Anne Cass, please. Oh, it's from Steve. Yeah, Steve. Steve told me to tell you that. It's from him. Anne said, Anne said she knows it's not from Steve because it, it's not from the garage. <laughs> oh, well done. Thanks, Anne. And we have uh, anything else? No, I think that. Uh, that concludes the uh, that concludes the gifts for everybody. We move on now to the awards for the players, and uh, I think uh, Steve Cuss wants to come forward. Go on, Cuss. All right, now, mate, I'm out of the pub, mate. Go buddy. We move on first to the manager's player of the year. Okay, just to um, hand out the uh, trophies for us, uh, his uh, champion forklifts are here tonight and we've got Derek and Greg Martin, so if they had to come forward and uh, they'll be presenting the awards. Okay, we're starting off with uh, my choice, manager's choice uh, player of the year. Um, I'd like to say it was a difficult one, but I'm not going to because, you know, one thing that happens as a manager, you want your players to know what you're going to get from them when you put them out on the pitch. And uh, that's what we're striving for at this level with, with a lot of our players in terms of we can be good one week and maybe not quite hit those heights the other week. But this particular player, I know what I get. I put him out there. He runs non-stop, 100% effort, game after game after game. I'm certainly glad that I'm not playing because I wouldn't like to tackle him. But we knew all those qualities when we signed him. 
But beyond those qualities, and what I've seen this year, is there's a real football player in there. For anybody who's able to play in a midfield and go box to box at this level, you've got to be a good player. And if you can get yourself nine goals thrown into that from a midfield area, again, it backs it up, you're a good player. So, manager's player of the year is John Blake. goal scorer um, to be fair as a side we, we, we shared our goals around um, but coming out on top with uh, 16 goals and again putting good performances on the back of scoring those 16 goals um, and he's you know a lot of people say you know he takes penalties and free kicks I, I don't believe in that because I know quite a few players in certain situations when it comes to taking penalties put their heads down and walk away it's a pressure situation and when you're on that dead ball situation to take that it is a real pressure situation for that player. Um, and top of that, he scored some great free kicks as well. So with 16 goals, top goal scorer, Mickey Evans. trophies for this one, um, one they can keep and one they've got to give back every year but um, in terms of this one it goes down as the, as the young player of the year so again similar situation to Ed, I think we've got a pretty young side and a pretty young squad here um, but this, this award that I've chosen goes to a player who's probably uh, a, quite a late signature for me, I probably had my squad together and uh, he came along to pre-season and uh, forced my hand a little bit in terms of the way he played and his performances and uh, when I asked him to sign, he agreed, and then I said to him that, you know, you might have to be patient because we, we've got certain players in certain positions, and uh, I think he was patient for three games, and then he got himself in, and um, from that point onwards, it's probably been a regular bar an injury game after game after game, and uh, his performances, again, similar to John's, have been a level of consistency that's been very high. He's uh, come across, as you do in this league, against some top-class strikers. He's defended well against them week in, week out. And like I say, those consistent performances means that Adam Costello is the young player of the year. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is my last one. So this is uh, on behalf of the players. Obviously, the players' player of the year. They get their own votes, and uh, maybe for the first time they agree with their manager. Because uh, everything I said about the quality of uh, John in winning my choice, uh, I think is backed up with the players. And uh, I think there was 18 votes. I won't say um, what the divide was, but you can imagine it was quite high for John. So again, players' player of the year is John Blake. Indeed. We move on now to the Supporters Player of the Year, and out of 110 people that voted, it was very, very close. I'm going to give you the order because I think it deserves merit. In third place was Adam Costello, second place was Nathan Pepperanen, but in first place, only by five, five votes, and he's got the hat trick, is John Blake.
I think his dad voted five times for him, but not me. Only a couple more. The next one is for the chairman's player of the year. And uh, and you all know how this came about when we had the ex-manager here. He didn't want to uh, put a player of the year down himself, so I chose one. But I kept it going because I think it's always nice to have something extra. And I always give, uh, you know, give it to a player, I feel, that has done tremendously well throughout the season. And my choice this year for the Chairman's Player of the Year, and if only he could score a goal with his left foot, is George Webb. This is for the Cuthbury Cup. This is the one he gets to keep. That, of course, goes back to the club. And it's for someone who's done an awful lot for the club. We know there are so many people that do an awful lot for the club, but we try and give it to different people, spread it around a bit. And this year, I even forget who it is. No, I don't. <laughs> this year it's me. No, 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 no. This year we've given it to the 50 50 man, Brian McCann. Here he is. Brian. Shucks. Get some bloody shoes. Hey, Ken, is there a check there to employ a pair of shoes? <laughs> The fashion guru. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, a cut. But we want that back, right? That one comes back, you keep that one. Okay. So I'd like to thank Champion Lifts on behalf of their sponsorship this year. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Only another couple of minutes. Another couple of minutes and that's it. <laughs> that's it for the awards it just remains for me to say at the end of this month I will be stepping down as chairman no no no, 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 no. we have someone who wants to do the job so after seven years as your chairman now is the right time to step aside and give someone else a chance I'm not leaving Wimborne Town although I was offered a post at Paul Town <laughs> I was <laughs> And that was to advise them how to keep within a budget, but that was mission impossible. So, uh, <laughs> as I said, it's not a leaving speech. I will still be a director, and I am moving up to become president of the club. Oh, yeah. no. so, so I will be here as much as I am now, pretty well. It just remains for me to say, as your chairman for the last seven years, I thank you all so much for your support that you've given me. And uh, all I can say is uh, I've had a great time. I'll still be here. Everything will still be the same. I'll still come in the dressing room and give you a rollicking when you play bad. I'll come in and also give you encouragement when you win and you play well. So things are not going to change very much. All I can say is have a good summer. And I look forward to seeing you all in July. The food is in the room over there. If we could ask the ladies, we could ask the ladies to go through first and the gentlemen will follow. So have a good summer. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The players, the players wish to say thank you to the tea ladies. If I could have them back again, please, Trish and Elaine. And if I could ask George Webb to come forward to present the bottles to them, that would be absolutely wonderful because they do look after your bread and butter. <laughs> George. On behalf of the players, thank you girls. Thank you so much. And you can have your picture taken. You can have your picture taken. Wedding picture taken.
Flushing Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> well, and a few more. If I could have, if I could ask the management team, please, to come forward. Steve Cuss, Paul Roast, Clive, if he's here. Andrew Patterson, I know he's here. Andrew, please, come forward. The team would like to say thank you and give you a bottle of something. I think it's rosé for Paul. <laughs> Is it rosé for Paul? Oh, sorry, John Edwards. John Edwards, where's John Edwards? Sorry. John Edwards. Sorry, John. Has everyone else has got a female physio? And Jeff, the kit man, please. Jeff. Jeff Robbins. Here he is. Players wish to say thank you. <laughs> that certainly concludes it. Thank you very much. The ladies can now go and have a drink. Thank you.